We'll now conclude section 9.3 by discussing two additional examples for the hyperbola. We begin with an example that reads, Given that the asymptotes of a hyperbola have slopes of one-half and negative one-half, and that the vertices of the hyperbola are at negative one-zero and seven-zero, find its standard form equation. So to begin, I'm going to go ahead and plot the two vertex points for the hyperbola. So we have one vertex at seven zero and one vertex at negative one zero. In plotting these two vertex points, I now know that the parabolas have to open one to the right and one to the left, which allows me to go ahead and write down a general format for my equation for the hyperbola. Remember that if we have hyperbolas, that where the parabola is open to the left and to the right, that the x comes first in the equation. So my equation is going to look like x minus h squared over a squared minus y minus k squared over b squared is equal to 1. So the first thing that I need to do is to, to determine the center of the hyperbola. So we know that the center is going to be located equal distance in between the two vertex points. And so if I look at the distance between my vertices, and I'm just going to count this distance over. This is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So there are 8 units between the two vertex points, and so we know that halfway in the middle of that would be 4 units. So I'm going to count back 1, 2, 3, 4, and here lies my center point. So this is going to be the point 3, 0. And so I'm going to go ahead and fill that in in my equation. So I'm going to, in place of the H, I am going to put a 3. So this will become X minus 3. And in place of the K, I'm going to put a 0. Okay. Now, the next thing that I need to do is determine the A and the B value. So remember that the A value is going to be the distance between the center and the vertex. And we've already determined that that's equal to 4, but I could come back and count 1, 2, 3, 4. The distance between the center and the vertex is 4, and so I'm going to plug that in for my A value. And then what about my B value? So remember that the B value is going to be determining the distance, be, it's going to determine the, the rectangle that we can draw that shows us how to draw the asymptotes. So think about your equation for your asymptotes on this parabola. So let me go back and look at that equation. This is the equation for the asymptotes when x is the first variable and notice that we have, as our equation, we have y minus k, and then we have positive and negative b over a, x minus h. And so I'm going to go back and write that down. And so now what I can do is actually fill in what I already know. So I know that my y parenthesis is y minus 0, that my k value is 0. I know that my a value was 4. And I know that my x parenthesis is x minus 3. Now keep in mind that we know that this slope is going to equal 1 half and negative 1 half. So in other words, this value right here, this is going to be the slope, and that is going to, that is going to need to simplify to be positive one-half and negative one-half. So what number is going to have to go on the top of that fraction? 
So we know that we're going to have to have a 2 on the top of that fraction so that when it simplifies, it's going to give me the slope of 1 half and negative 1 half that the problem referenced. And so I now know that the B value is going to equal 2. And so I can come up here and plug the B value in for 2. And then we can go in and actually simplify that equation out. And so we would have for our final equation, let's see, we would have x minus 3 squared over 16 minus, and the y minus 0 just becomes a y squared over 4 is equal to 1. Now, we're going to go ahead and just take a quick look at the graph of this. Um, keeping in mind that you already have your vertex points and you already know the turn, let's just talk just briefly about that rectangle just to see it play out in one more example. So here's the final result, and we have the two vertex points plotted, and we have a parabola opening to the left and to the right. And remember that the asymptotes help you determine how wide to open those parabolas. So remember that you're going to use your A value and your B value to help you draw that rectangle. And so our A value was 4, and our B value was 2. And so remember that from your center point, which lies right here, you're going to go over A. So 1, 2, 3, 4. It should put you in a vertex and allow you to draw this side of the rectangle. Coming back 4 in the other direction should put you on the other vertex and allow you to draw that side of the rectangle. The height of the rectangle is referenced by the B, so we'll go up 2. That will allow us to draw this part of the rectangle. And we're going to go down 2, which allows us to draw this side of the rectangle. Once you draw the box, then you'll draw the diagonals, which will be the asymptotes. And once the asymptotes are drawn, you can then use that as a guide to draw your parabolas. Okay, so our last example is an application problem that we're going to look at. And it says that a ship measures a time difference of 0 .000108 seconds between the signals of two LORAN signals sent from stations 100 miles apart along a coastline. If the ship maintains this time difference, where will it land on the coastline? Assume that this signal moves at a speed of light, which is 186,000 miles per second. So we're going to begin by graphing this situation on an x-y axis. And so we're going to place the center at 0, 0. Okay, so I'm just going to do a rough sketch, and then we'll look at the sketch that the book draw, drew in just a second. So we've got a center point at 0, 0. And we know that we have the two stations which are going to be a hundred miles apart and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over 50 units and I'm going to put a station right here so we could call this um, station we'll call it station B I guess and then I'm going to come over 50 units this way and we'll call this station A all right now let's let's get some coordinates here so I know that to get to this point I went over 50 so this will be the point over 50 up 0 and then I went back 50 this way so negative 50 and up 0 so we have those two points noted now these are going to be the foci of our hyperbola all right and we're going to assume that our ship is going to be somewhere along that hyperbola that we're going to draw. And so if these are the foci, then you're going to have a hyperbola that kind of wraps around it in both directions. And we assume that the ship is somewhere on the top of this, if this is sort of the shoreline. All right, so let me go ahead and show you the picture that the book draws, just so it's a little better of a picture. All right, so we have our two foci points located here and here. All right, those are the stations, and the ship moves in this time and it we want to know where does it land on the coastline and so we assume the ship is somewhere up in here in the water part of this hyperbola so keep in mind that if the ship is 
is following this path that when it hits the coastline, which is what we're looking at, we want to know um, where will it land on the coastline. It's either going to land like right here, okay, at the vertex, or if it's over here by some chance, it's going to land here at this vertex. So the vertices on this hyperbola are where the ship is going to hit the coastline. So in order for us to find out where the ship hits the coastline, we're going to use a formula from algebra for distance. So you probably recall this formula that says distance is equal to rate times time. All right, so what do we know? So we know that the rate of the signal is moving at the speed of light. So the rate is 186,000 miles per second. So I'm just going to kind of jot down what we know. So we know that the rate is 186,000 miles per second. And we also are given the time. So if we look back at our problem, they tell us that the time difference between the two signals is 0.000108 seconds. And so we can plug this into our formula, which basically says we're just going to multiply these two numbers together to calculate the distance. So if I multiply 186,000 times my time, then my distance is approximately 20 miles. And so what we have just found is the distance from one vertex to the next. So we know that the distance from here to here is 20. And so the distance from the center to either side is going to be 10. So we know that the ship will reach the shore 10 miles from the origin. And so that will be our answer. Again, the question is asking you, where does the ship meet the coastline? And so it will meet the coastline at a distance of 10 miles from the origin of our graph.